please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Mission Prosperity Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Perhaps the most joyful event in a couple's life is the birth of their first child. New parenthood brings with it a lot of happiness, a lot of excitement and a lot of financial responsibility. Indeed, without proper financial planning, having a child can lead to a huge financial burden. Hello and welcome to this special series, Mutual Fund Day Life Hacks. I'm your host, Mridu Bhandari, and today we are going to be discussing financial planning for new and expecting parents. And to do that, we have with us on the show, Arun Sundaresan, Product Head at Reliance Nippon Life Asset Management Limited, and Pankaj Matpal, CFP and Managing Director, Optima Money Manager. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on the show. Let's begin with when should you start planning uh, uh, financial planning for your children uh, as soon as a couple has decided that at some point in time they want to have kids should they already be looking at financial planning even if kids are a couple of years down the line Arun? the best part about expecting parents and uh, you know the new parents that most things are kind of becoming very clear like uh, the child is already born or you know you know when it's going to be born one and a half years you'll be putting the child into a play school uh, by three in kindergarten and then you know a whole lot of things you know follow yeah. primary education higher secondary so it gives you a good framework to properly plan out things you know uh, how things are going to pan out broadly obviously you cannot plan out everything yeah. like uh, the child could decide to do something uh, uh, like uh, it could decide to become a doctor it could uh, choose to study in uh, UK those things are still a variable, but a lot of things are known. It gives you a good uh, framework to start planning upfront. So uh, to answer your question as to when the planning should be done, as early as possible. You know, uh, we grew up hearing our parents talk about traditional investment options like a fixed deposit or a public provident fund where they saved for our education or uh, you know other goals of life. But uh, today, there is a whole host of other options available as well. So take us through some of these new age options. See, first important thing is because when you talk about traditional plan, uh, the kind of returns you expect from traditional plan, it becomes sometimes difficult to beat inflation. When we invest, the objective is that we should be uh, ready to achieve our financial goals. So if the cost today is something, say, one lakh for something, it will not remain one lakh in future. So uh, after you factor in inflation, you have to plan for that. That is why there is importance of asset allocation. See, still every asset, whether it's a debt, equity, real estate, commodity, it has its importance in your portfolio. But uh, based on your objective of investment, time horizon, your risk appetite, you have to allocate your money in different asset classes. Mm -hmm. So based on asset class, you have different kind of products. Uh, if you are planning, like you want to put your money in uh, fixed returns or guaranteed return products, like you said PPF, that can be a good example or Sukanya Samradhi scheme for a girl child can be a good scheme if you talk about that long term uh, with a guaranteed returns. But again, because there is inflation to beat that, uh, equity is something which can help you. Right, right. And Arun, children's education, of course, demands a lot of money these days, demands a lot of investment. It's pretty expensive, right from nursery admissions to uh, uh, you know, high school and then, of course, higher education. What are some of the best financial instruments uh, to save for children's education? Is SIP the best route to go ahead with that? Yeah, so you're bang on. In fact, uh, uh, not just the cost. Obviously, the cost is very high. Even the rate at which the education cost keeps going up is phenomenal. It, it alarming, in fact, I was uh, reading up, there is a National Sample Survey Office which has done a survey. The primary education cost has increased by 175% in the last seven, seven and a half years. Wow. Right? So essentially what we are talking about is a three time kind of a, uh, increase. Mm -hmm. So today, if your cost is, let's say, 6 lakh, you can expect that cost to be about anywhere between 14, 15 lakhs in a matter of seven, seven and a half. So by the time uh, the child is born and it, it you know, kind of seeks higher education, yeah. we're talking about a 15, 16 year kind of a time frame. 
uh, you're talking about eight times, nine times cost, right? So today, if the cost is six lakh, for example, the higher education cost is six lakh, you're looking at close to 50 lakh kind of a education expense after, you know, when you reach the higher education. Right. Now, how do you cope up? Uh, it is estimated that education cost is growing at about 10 to 12 percent, which is almost uh, two and a half, three times than your normal inflation. Right. So in order to beat that, one of the only known avenues is equities, which can possibly give you that kind of return over a period of time. So as you approach the goal, you will have to moderate, move towards products which have slightly lesser equity and probably right at the goal, uh, probably have completely out of equity kind of uh, exposure. So that's something that uh, somebody, but to start with, longer the time horizon, equity exposure should be uh, higher and gradually keep reducing as you approach the goal. Right. That should be there. All right. So that, that's an interesting uh, observation. Pankaj, uh, most fund houses today are offering uh, plans designed specifically for children. How useful are these and how are they different from really designing your child's portfolio yourself? See, objective is to have sufficient money when you need it. So whether a uh, scheme is branded as a child plan or uh, any other thing, the most important that whether it will help you achieving your financial goals. So most of these children education plan, uh, these are hybrid plan basically, which are offered by mutual fund companies. <coughs> so these are hybrid plan where you invest in equity and debt. The option you have there that you can lock your money. See, sometimes what happens, we plan for long term, but in between we have some other needs and we redeem our money. Yeah. So here what you're doing, you are just locking your money so that it is kept for that purpose and we should not use it for any other reason. Mm. That is good in some ways because psychologically you know that the money is not available for any other purpose. Yeah. But sometimes if a scheme is not performing, then what? Right. So that is why if you are disciplined yourself, it is better to invest in uh, the portfolio of your choice, invest in equity fund, invest in debt fund or hybrid fund where you have liquidity. If a scheme is not performing, you have choice to redeem it. So don't go by the scheme name. Most important, two things, invest early, save regularly. And second thing is, I means follow a discipline. Right. Sometimes what happens, people start early, but then stop also it immediately. Yes. That yes. should not happen. Yes, but how much to invest? That's a question that most people have that, uh, you know, in percentage terms, if you can break that down for us, Arun, uh, for a salaried professional, what percentage of his or her income should he or she be investing on a monthly basis? So in finance, only four things matter. How much you invest, that investment can be lump sum or systematic, yeah. right? What is the rate of return you're going to get? How long are you going to invest? The power of compounding, the number of years the money is going to get compounded, and therefore what you will be left with. So you tell me three variables, I'll tell you the fourth variable. Right. So you can be largely sorted you know, if you take that approach, obviously you can't put a number to it, yep. but uh, you know, it's very easy to do. All right. Okay. So, uh, Pankaj, another important aspect is maintaining some amount of emergency cash, some amount of liquidity at any given point in time. So, uh, what are the best options for that? Do you recommend investing in liquid funds? Definitely a very uh, important thing when you do a financial planning, first thing is your contingency planning, emergency planning followed by your risk management, then your planning for different goals and then for planning for retirement. So emergency fund, that is very important part of the financial planning. Liquid fund is definitely a good choice because it offers you liquidity. Risk is very limited compared to other kinds of mutual funds. So uh, investing in liquid fund or investing in fixed deposit uh, because nowadays fixed deposits are also available which are linked to your saving account in any time. If you need money, you can uh, and cash that. Right, right. So your saving bank account, your cash in hand, your some fixed deposit, your liquid fund, these are the uh, instruments or schemes available with you where you should park your money for contingency. On the show today, we are focusing on new parents or expecting parents and I'm joined by a set of financial experts here. We are helping them design financial planning and setting financial goals for them. Uh, gentlemen, one of the bigger long-term goals for any parent is higher education. And uh, another one is weddings of their kids. So uh, keeping these two things in mind, what sort of uh, investment options do you recommend? Of course, 
starting earlier is better. We've understood that uh, from the first segment. But uh, are there specific uh, instruments that you recommend for both of these long-term goals? Is it more advisable to be aggressive on equity since these are long-term goals? Are those yeah. Goals? So uh, prima facie, yes. Uh, both are very large goals, which will require huge amounts. But thankfully, you have a lot of time so that uh, you, know, you can systematically invest even small amounts over a longer period of time can help you reach there, number one. Second, uh, obviously, uh, longer the time frame, equity, more of equity can help. And as I told you, as you approach the goal, you'll have to reduce that, number one. Uh, when it comes to weddings specifically, right, uh, most of the weddings, uh, at least in the Indian context, use a lot of gold, yes. right? Uh, so uh, if you know for sure you need so much gold, a good thing to do would be to actually save in gold funds. Right. So this has got nothing to do with returns or how much uh, money you're going to make. Suppose I need, uh, let's say, 100 grams of gold, right? Regardless of where the gold price is going to be at the time of the wedding, yes. right? I can systematically plan to invest uh, an equivalent of 100 grams. Can I accumulate that gold? So can I set up a SIP in gold funds, which will help me accumulate an equivalent of one gram over the next 100 months? Right. So those kind of things can be, uh, you know, very easily worked out. And of course, in mutual funds itself, you have various of these options possible. Right. So Pankaj, can you weigh gold ETFs versus gold mutual funds for us? Uh, and uh, how much of your portfolio should comprise gold? Gold, five to ten percent in your portfolio uh, should be should form a part of that. That is enough because if you see gold returns. Gold returns are basically based on the uh, currency. Your uh, because we are importing gold, we don't produce gold in India. Yeah. So if the dollar price goes up, the gold returns we ex we see. Otherwise, there is no returns on gold. So that is why only to beat inflation, we should have some allocation in your portfolio. See, objective is to invest in gold. So when you invest in gold ETF, money goes goes in pure gold. Right. But you have to have a DMAT account for that right. because you're buying units of gold to your, in your DMAT account. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are not investing in equity shares or something, you don't have a DMAT account. So just for a small investment in gold, you don't need to open DMAT. In that case, gold saving funds of mutual funds is a better choice mm -hmm. because they in, buy the units of gold ETF. Right. So ultimately, gold saving mutual funds is buying gold ETF and gold ETF is buying your gold. Okay. So, you know, in, in all of these, in meeting all of these goals, young parents often forget about their own retirement. And uh, that's a goal that perhaps most Indians like to put off for a later stage in life. So, uh, Arun, give some advice to our young audience here today on how they should be planning for retirement and what are the best vehicles of instrument for that goal. Yeah, sure. So we talked about two big goals, which is education, each child's education as well as the wedding. Uh, retirement is even bigger. Uh, in my view, it's the most important financial goal, simply for the fact that it spans almost your entire life span. So retirement is not about old age at all, right? And it's not that you will be able to meet and plan for your retirement when you're approaching retirement. Yes. In fact, it should be done as early as possible, possibly around 25, 30 itself, so that in the early stages, you can accumulate very, very aggressively, so that you can ensure that you have a good corpus, retirement corpus, which can take care of you post-retirement. Right. And post-retirement phase, again, is very long. Please, please understand, uh, with the current kind of life expectancy and that picking up as well. We have a good 20, 25 years, if not more, to live post-retirement. Right. So we're talking about a time frame of 50, 60 years, right? Unless you pay conscious attention to this, you, you plan for it, you act on it, things will become very, very difficult for you. So uh, people will have to think about retirement seriously, and they should start making a plan for it, very distinct from all the other goals that we talked about, yeah. and do it right away. Yes. Right. So, Pankaj, would you like to add to that? What are the best vehicles of instrument for retirement? Yeah, definitely, because if you're planning early and there is a long time horizon uh, to achieve that goal, then definitely 80%, 70% allocation must be in equity. And uh, systematically keep investing, keep increasing your investment. 
we always say or we always hear this thing there is risk in equity that is only in short term. In fact, in long term, not investing in equity is bigger risk. That is risk of inflation. And uh, another important uh, aspect that we are all looking at, not just new parents, uh, we are all looking at tax saving every year, year on year, we are looking for avenues to save tax. Uh, so how would you weigh traditional options like PPF or uh, uh, you know, national saving certificates or uh, pension plans uh, opposed to ELSS tax saver funds? What's a good uh, diversification to have between all of these instruments? Sure. So uh, ELSS, as we call it, equity linked savings schemes and mutual funds are tax saving mutual funds. They offer tax benefit under Section 80C. So uh, obviously, they are completely into equity. So the underlying are stocks. Right. So to that extent, they are 100% equity. Uh, they offer a, they come with three year lock in period. So you can't take out money. But if you look at other tax saving instruments, sometimes the lock in is even higher. So you'll have to take your decision basis your risk appetite mm. and given the time horizon like will a hundred percent equity product suit you or should it be lower or should it be outrightly debt yeah. that should be the primary decision point tax and other angle should be supplementary to the main decision all right yeah. okay so as we close i'm going to ask both of you for one tip to new parents or expecting parents uh, how can they plan their finances better what's top of the list for both of you. Pankaj, would you like to start? You should start investing as soon as they plan a child or at a time of marriage itself. All right, start early and? Okay, so I don't have a tip. In fact, I have a request. Parents, uh, you know, every time when they gift their children for their birthdays, along with gift, obviously I'm not suggesting that you don't gift material things, you do that. But along with that, also make investments on their name. Let the child also know that an investment is being made in their name. Let them become financially aware as early as possible. Right? So that would be my request. All right. So that's a very good sound advice. And uh, we're open for questions now. So if any of you have any questions for our experts, just raise your hand and wait for the mic to come to you. I have a daughter. So I wanted to know, so I've obviously went through a lot of government schemes that I have, like the Sukanya schemes and all that. But anything that you would suggest, I mean, are there investment options different for boys or like sons or daughters? Anything beneficial for daughters? You could suggest something on that. Anything specifically yeah, for girls? Scheme, for the girls? Sukanya Samradhi scheme, and you have already invested in this. Yeah. Apart from that, there is no uh, gender specific scheme. So, the only thing is that, as you said, that you invest mostly in traditional plan. Mm -hmm. It means you are uh, ignoring equity. Yeah, my suggestion to you that you must invest in equity mutual funds because if you do not have much knowledge about equity market, so investing directly in equity stocks may be riskier. But these mutual funds are managed by professionals. It offers you diversification, there is liquidity. So start investing in mutual funds through SIP route and there is uh, uh, transparency in the portfolio. You can see where your money has been invested, means underlying stocks also you can uh, know the expenses you know how much expenses they are in the particular scheme so investing in equity through mutual fund will help you achieving your financial goal thank you what are the new tax reforms on capital gains if one of you can tell us okay thank you Pankaj. you are talking about a long term capital gain which has been introduced on uh, equity yes okay see one thing is because uh, when your cap long term capital gain exceeds rupees 1 lakh that is taxable so threshold limit is 1 lakh rupees now there is no choice to save it if there is a tax you have to pay but yes any short term loss can be set off against a long term as well as short term gain all right there's no getting around taxes anyone else yes uh, what should be the ideal duration of the sip investment basically how long should i stay invested and when should i take a decision you know to discontinue my investment or change my portfolio accordingly yeah so uh longer the better you first thing pankaj also mentioned uh, this you need to have the discipline when you're decided on a particular goal and you're deciding to invest for that particular goal uh, critical would be to stick on to it and not you know withdraw in between in fact uh, you know if you do that and there could be phases where markets are going up etc there could be severe potential losses 
and your eventual return will get impacted. So one, invest for as long as possible and stay put, be disciplined. Obviously, the equity debt exposure, the allocation towards equity and debt, that has to be varied. It has to be moderated as you approach the goal. That's the only thing, but uh, it, it, it does not mean that you will stop your investment in between. It should be as long as possible. Should I diversif uh, diversify my portfolio in between if the numbers are not that attractive anymore? Diversification across different schemes? Yes. Yes, that's also recommended. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So uh, each fund house has its own style. A particular fund could have investments in a, in a specific manner. So therefore, it makes sense to diversify across different funds. Having said that, don't diversify too much. So if you invest into too many schemes, Ultimately, it's like investing in the market. You're not going to get any potential advantage or what we in technical terms call as alpha. You're not going to get that if you put your money across. That essentially means that you don't know what you're doing. So you'll have to select a few good uh, funds, diversify, uh, that should serve your purpose. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for those very valuable insights. With that, it's a wrap of this episode of Mutual Fund Day Life Hacks. Hope these valuable insights help you plan and manage your finances better. We'll be back next time with lots more. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.